The sound of shattering glass jolted me from my sleep. My heart raced as I fumbled for my phone, squinting at the bright screen. 3.17 a.m. I held my breath, straining to hear any movement downstairs. Silence. Then, a muffled curse. Elliot, I whispered, shaking my son's shoulder. Wake up, sweetie. We need to be very quiet. His eyes fluttered open, confusion quickly replaced by fear as he registered my urgency. I pressed a finger to my lips and guided him to the closet, tucking him behind a row of hanging clothes. Stay here. Don't make a sound. I'll be right back. I crept down the hallway, my bare feet silent on the carpet. As I neared the stairs, a familiar voice drifted up from the living room. Where's the damn thing? Sean, my ex-husband and the last person I wanted in my house at this hour. Or any hour, for that matter. I descended the stairs slowly, my hand trailing the wall for support. The living room was a mess, cushions strewn about and drawers pulled open. Sean stood in the center, swaying slightly as he rifled through a stack of papers on the coffee table. "'What the hell are you doing here?' I demanded, flicking on the lights. Sean spun around, his bloodshot eyes wide with surprise. "'Olivia, I, uh, I needed to get something. At three in the morning? You broke in,' he waved a dismissive hand. Don't be so dramatic. I still have a key. Which I told you to return months ago. Ah, you're trespassing, Sean. He stumbled toward me, and I caught a whiff of alcohol. Come on, Liv. I just need some cash. For Elliot's birthday present. I laughed bitterly. Elliot's birthday was two months ago. You didn't even call. Sean's face darkened. I've been busy. Things have been complicated. Complicated? Is that what you call gambling away your paycheck and shacking up with that waitress from Denny's? His eyes narrowed. How did small town, Sean? People talk. I crossed my arms, stealing myself. I want you out of this house. Now. He took another step closer, his voice low and threatening. Not until I get what I came for. There's nothing here for you, I spat. Leave or I'm calling the cops. Sean's hand shot out, gripping my arm painfully. You wouldn't dare. A small voice came from the top of the stairs. Mom? We both turned to see Elliot, his eyes wide with fear. Sean's grip loosened. Hey, buddy, he said, his tone suddenly jovial. Dad's just visiting. Go back to bed. I wrenched my arm free. Elliot, go to your room and lock the door. Now. Sean's face contorted with anger. Don't you dare turn my son against me. You've done that all on your own, I shot back. He lunged forward, but his drunken state made him clumsy. I sidestepped easily, and he stumbled into the coffee table, sending it crashing to the floor. That's it. I said, grabbing my phone. I'm calling the police. Sean struggled to his feet, panic replacing anger. Wait, Liv, please. I'm sorry, okay? I'll go. I paused, my finger hovering over the call button. This is the last time, Sean. If you ever come here again, I'll file for a restraining order. He nodded, backing towards the door. I get it. I'll... I'll make things right. As the door closed behind him, I sank onto the couch, my hands shaking. Elliot's tentative footsteps on the stairs made me look up. Is Dad gone? He asked, his voice small. I nodded, forcing a smile. Yeah, sweetie. He's gone. Everything's okay now. But as I held my son close, I knew nothing was okay. Sean's intrusion had shattered more than just my sense of security. It had confirmed my worst fears about how far he'd fallen and how much danger he might pose to our son. I needed a plan, and I knew just who to call for help. I paced the kitchen, phone pressed to my ear, listening to the endless ringing. Come on, Isabel, I muttered. Pick up. Finally, a click. Hello. Isabel's voice was groggy with sleep. Isabel, it's Olivia. I'm sorry to call so early, but it's about Sean. There was a sharp intake of breath. What's he done now? I recounted the night's events, my voice shaking. As I spoke, I could hear Isabel's breathing quicken. That boy, she said when I finished. I thought I'd raised him better than this. It's not your fault, Isabel. Sean makes his own choices. She sighed heavily. Maybe. But I can't help feeling responsible. What can I do to help? I hesitated. I hate to ask, but I need to protect Elliot. Sean's spiraling, and I'm afraid he'll do something drastic. Say no more, Isabel said firmly. I'm on the next flight out. Relief washed over me. Thank you. I don't know what I'd do without you. After we hung up, I found Elliot in the living room, half-heartedly picking up the mess Sean had left behind. Hey, sweetie, I said, kneeling beside him. How are you feeling? He shrugged, not meeting my eyes. Is Dad coming back? My heart clenched. I don't think so, honey. Not for a while. 
Elliot nodded, his little face scrunched in concentration. Good, he said finally. He scared you. I pulled him into a hug, blinking back tears. I'm okay, Elliot. We're going to be just fine. The next day passed in a blur of work and worry. I jumped at every noise, half expecting Sean to come crashing through the door again. By the time I picked up Elliot from school, my nerves were frayed. As we pulled into the driveway, I noticed an unfamiliar car parked across the street. A woman sat in the driver's seat, her gaze fixed on our house. Elliot, go inside and start your homework, I said, keeping my voice light. I'll be right there. I approached the car, my heart pounding. The woman rolled down her window, revealing a face I'd only seen in Facebook photos. Rachel, I said, crossing my arms. What are you doing here? Sean's girlfriend had the decency to look uncomfortable. I, I needed to talk to you about Sean. There's nothing to talk about. I, I snapped. He broke into my house last night. He's lucky I didn't press charges. Rachel's eyes widened. He what? Oh, God, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. What did you think would happen when you got involved with an addict? She flinched. I thought I could help him. But things have gotten... complicated. A chill ran down my spine. Complicated how? Rachel glanced around nervously. Sean's in trouble. Big trouble. He owes some dangerous people a lot of money. That's not my problem anymore, I said, turning to leave. Wait, Rachel called. They know about Elliot. They've been asking questions. I froze, fear gripping my heart. What kind of questions? About his school, his routine. I think, I think they might try to use him to get to Sean. The world tilted beneath my feet. I gripped the car door to steady myself. Why are you telling me this? Rachel's eyes filled with tears because I realized I'm in over my head and because no child should suffer for their parents' mistakes. I nodded, my mind racing. Thank you for the warning. Now I need you to leave and never come near my family again. As Rachel drove away, I hurried inside, my hands shaking as I locked the door. Elliot looked up from his homework, his brow furrowed with concern. Mom, what's wrong? I forced a smile. Nothing, sweetie, just a little tired. I glanced at the clock. Grandma Isabel should be here soon. Why don't we make her favorite cookies to welcome her? As Elliot cheered and ran to the kitchen, I leaned against the wall, taking deep breaths. Isabel couldn't get here fast enough. We needed a plan, and we needed it now. The stakes had just gotten much, much higher. The moment Isabel walked through the door, I felt a wave of relief wash over me. Her familiar perfume enveloped me as we hugged, and for a brief moment, I felt like a child again, safe and protected. Oh, Olivia, she said, pulling back to look at me. You look exhausted, dear. I managed a weak smile. It's been a rough couple of days. Elliot barreled into the room, throwing himself at his grandmother. Grandma, Izzy? Isabel's face lit up as she scooped him into her arms. There's my little man. My, you've grown. As Elliot chattered away about school and his latest art projects, I caught Isabel's eye. She nodded, understanding the unspoken message. We needed to talk. Once Elliot was settled in bed, Isabel and I sat at the kitchen table, mugs of tea steaming between us. Tell me everything, she said, her voice gentle but firm. I recounted Sean's break-in and Rachel's warning, my hands shaking as I spoke. Isabel listened intently, her brow furrowing deeper with each word. When I finished, she reached across the table and squeezed my hand. We'll fix this, Olivia. I have an idea, but it's not going to be easy. At this point, I'm willing to try anything, I said. Isabel took a deep breath. I'm going to offer Sean money, a lot of money, enough to pay off his debts and then some. I blinked in surprise. Isabel, that's incredibly generous, but... She held up a hand. There's a catch. In exchange, he'll sign away his parental rights, completely and irrevocably. The weight of her words hung in the air between us. Do you think he'd actually do it? I whispered. For the right amount? Yes, I do. Isabel's voice was heavy with sadness. My son has proven time and time again that money means more to him than family. As much as it pained me to admit it, I knew she was right. Okay, I said, let's do it. The next morning, we put our plan into action. Isabel made the call while I paced nervously in the living room, Elliot safely at school. He agreed to meet, Isabel said as she hung up. This afternoon at the diner on Main Street. My stomach churned. I should be there. Isabel shook her head. No, dear, it's better if I handle this alone. Sean's more likely to let his guard down with me. As much as I hated it, I knew she was right. 
The hours crawled by. I jumped at every sound, half expecting Sean to burst through the door at any moment. When my phone finally rang, I nearly dropped it in my haste to answer. It's done, Isabel said, her voice tight. He signed the papers. Relief flooded through me, followed quickly by a wave of guilt. How, how did he seem? There was a long pause, desperate, relieved, and completely unrepentant. Isabel's voice cracked. He didn't even ask about Elliot. My heart ached for her. I'm so sorry, Isabel. You shouldn't have had to do that. No, I'm glad I did, she said firmly. It needed to be done, for Elliot's sake. As we said our goodbyes, a noise outside caught my attention. I peered through the window, my blood running cold at what I saw. A black SUV was parked across the street, two men in dark suits standing beside it. As I watched, one of them pointed at our house. My phone buzzed with a text from an unknown number. The debt isn't settled. We know where the kid is. Panic gripped me. I ran to the door, fumbling with the locks, but as I yanked it open, ready to race to the school, I came face to face with Sean. His eyes were wild, his clothes disheveled. Olivia, he gasped, you have to help me. They're going to kill me. Behind him, I saw the men from the SUV approaching, their hands reaching inside their jackets. My mind raced. In that split second, I had to decide, slam the door on Sean and call the police, or let him in and potentially endanger Elliot. The choice I made would change everything. The weeks following Sean's desperate appearance at my doorstep were a blur of fear, exhaustion, and constant vigilance. I'd slammed the door in his face that day, my maternal instincts overriding any lingering sympathy. The men in suits had dragged him away, his pleas fading as I called the police with shaking hands. Now, as I sat at my kitchen table, staring at the pile of bills before me, I felt the weight of our new reality pressing down. The extra security measures, new locks, an alarm system, even self-defense classes, had drained my savings. But I'd do it all again in a heartbeat to keep Elliot safe. A gentle ping from my laptop pulled me from my thoughts. Isabel's smiling face appeared on the screen, a welcome sight after so many sleepless nights. Olivia, dear, how are you holding up? I managed a weak smile. We're managing, Isabel. How about you? Her eyes crinkled with concern. Oh, don't you worry about me. I'm more interested in how my grandson is doing. As if on cue, Elliot bounded into the room, his face lighting up at the sight of his grandmother. Grandma Izzy! For a few precious minutes, I watched them chat. Elliot's laughter filling the room as Isabel regaled him with stories of her garden. It was moments like these that made all the struggle worthwhile. Once Elliot had run off to play, Isabel's expression turned serious. Any word from Sean? I shook my head. Nothing since that day. The police say he's in the wind. Isabel sighed heavily. I should have known the money wouldn't be enough. Olivia, I've been thinking that perhaps it's time for a fresh start for all of us. My breath caught in my throat. What do you mean? I have a summer house up in Maine. It's secluded, peaceful. Maybe you and Elliot could use a change of scenery. And, well, I wouldn't mind the company either. The offer hung in the air, tempting and terrifying all at once. Leave everything behind? Start over? I, I don't know, Isabel. My job. Elliot's school. She waved a hand dismissively. Details, my dear. All solvable problems. Just promise me you'll think about it? I nodded, my mind already racing with possibilities. After we said our goodbyes, I sat in silence, weighing our options. The idea of escape was intoxicating, but could I really uproot Elliot's life? A sharp knock at the door shattered my reverie. My heart leapt into my throat as I approached cautiously, peering through the peephole. Rachel stood on my porch, looking haggard and afraid. Against my better judgment, I opened the door a crack. What are you doing here? Please she whispered, her eyes darting nervously. I need your help. Sean's in trouble. Real trouble this time. I started to close the door, but her next words froze me in place. They're going to kill him, Olivia. And then they're coming for Elliot. My blood ran cold. What are you talking about? Rachel's voice trembled. The men Sean owes? They're not just loan sharks, they're human traffickers. And they think Elliot could fetch a good price. The world tilted beneath my feet. I gripped the doorframe to steady myself, bile rising in my throat. Why should I believe you? I managed to choke out. Rachel's eyes filled with tears. Because I've seen their operation. I've been helping Sean hide, but I can't do it anymore. I'm in too deep. My mind raced, weighing the risks. 
If Rachel was telling the truth, Elliot was in far more danger than I'd ever imagined. But if it was a trap, please, Rachel begged, I know I have no right to ask, but help us, for Elliot's sake. In that moment, I knew my decision would change everything. The safe, quiet life I'd been building for Elliot and myself hung in the balance. But could I live with myself if I turned my back on this threat, no matter how remote? I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what was to come. Get inside, I said, opening the door wider. Tell me everything. As Rachel stepped over the threshold, I silently prayed I wasn't making the biggest mistake of my life. The familiar chime of an incoming video call filled my living room. I settled in front of the laptop, eager to see Isabel's face. These calls had become a lifeline for both of us, a moment of normalcy in the chaos our lives had become. Olivia, dear, Isabel's warm smile filled the screen. How are you and Elliot holding up? I forced a smile. We're managing, Isabel. How about you? How was your doctor's appointment? A flicker of confusion crossed her face. Doctor's appointment? Oh, yes. It was fine, I think. My heart sank. This wasn't the first time Isabel had forgotten something important. I glanced at the sticky note I'd placed on the corner of my screen. Ask about memory test results. Isabel, I said gently, do you remember what the doctor said about your memory? She frowned, her eyes darting away from the camera. I... I'm not sure. It's all a bit fuzzy. I took a deep breath, stealing myself. The doctor mentioned some concerns, remember? They wanted to run some tests. Recognition dawned in her eyes, followed quickly by fear. Oh, Olivia, I'm slipping, aren't I? Tears pricked at my eyes. We don't know anything for sure yet, but we'll face it together, okay? Isabel nodded, visibly pulling herself together. Of course, dear. Now let me see my grandson. I called Elliot over, watching as his animated chatter brought the light back to Isabel's eyes. But as he regaled her with tales of his latest school project, I noticed her struggling to follow along, asking the same questions multiple times. After Elliot bounded off to play, Isabel's facade crumbled. I'm scared, Olivia, she whispered. What if I forget him? What if I forget you? We won't let that happen, I said firmly, even as doubt gnawed at me. We'll figure this out. As we said our goodbyes, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were losing Isabel, bit by bit. The one person who had stood by us through everything, who had helped us escape Sean's destructive influence, was now facing a battle of her own. I was so lost in thought that I almost missed the notification popping up on my screen. An email from an unknown address, with a subject line that made my blood run cold. We know where the boy is. With shaking hands, I opened the message. Inside was a single image, a photo of Elliot on the playground at his school, taken earlier that day. Below it, a message. The debt isn't settled. Meet us, or the kid pays. Panic clawed at my throat. I grabbed my phone, ready to call the police, when another email arrived. This one contained a video. My finger hovered over the play button, dread pooling in my stomach. Sean's battered face filled the screen. Olivia, he croaked. I'm so sorry. They have me. They'll come for Elliot next. You have to run. Take him and go. Please, protect our son. The video cut off abruptly, leaving me staring at my own horrified reflection in the dark screen. My mind raced. We couldn't stay here. That much was clear. But where could we go? Who could we trust? Isabel's offer of her summer house in Maine suddenly seemed like a lifeline. Secluded, far from here, a place where we could regroup and plan our next move. But could I uproot Elliot's life so suddenly? And what about Isabel? In her deteriorating condition, could she handle such a drastic change? The sound of a car door slamming outside jolted me from my thoughts. I peered through the curtains, my heart pounding as I saw two men in dark suits approaching our front door. In that moment, I knew I was out of time. Whatever decision I made would change our lives forever. Stay and face whatever was coming, or run and leave everything behind. The doorbell rang, its cheerful tone a stark contrast to the terror gripping my heart. I took a deep breath, steeling myself for what was to come. It was time to choose. The video call with Isabel had just ended, but something felt off. I moved to close the laptop when I realized Isabel's camera was still on. She must have forgotten to end the call on her end. I was about to disconnect when a movement caught my eye. A shadowy figure crept into Isabel's living room, careful to stay out of her line of sight. My heart stopped as I recognized the intruder, Sean. Isabel? 
I shouted, forgetting for a moment that she couldn't hear me. I watched helplessly as Sean rifled through drawers, pocketing what looked like jewelry and cash. Frantically, I dialed Isabel's number, praying she'd pick up. On the screen, I saw her reach for her phone, confusion etched on her face. Olivia, didn't we just talk? Isabel, listen to me, I said, trying to keep my voice calm. Sean is in your house. He's stealing from you. Call the police right now. There was a moment of stunned silence. Then, what? No, that's impossible. Sean wouldn't. A crash echoed through the phone and the video feed. Sean had knocked over a lamp, startled by Isabel's voice. Our eyes met through the camera, and for a second I saw the desperate, cornered look of a man with nothing left to lose. Mom? Sean's voice was shaky. I can explain. Get out. Isabel's scream was filled with a fury I'd never heard from her before. Get out of my house, you thief! Sean bolted for the door, but not before grabbing a small safe from the bookshelf. My blood ran cold. I knew that safe contained Isabel's most valuable possessions and important documents. Isabel, call the police now, I shouted. I'm on my way. I ended the call and raced for my car, my mind whirling. How long had Sean been stealing from his own mother? Was this why she'd been so forgetful lately, constantly misplacing things? As I sped towards Isabel's house, my phone buzzed with a text from an unknown number. Got what I needed. The kid's next. You can't protect him forever. Terror gripped me. I'd been so focused on Isabel, I'd left Elliot vulnerable. I called my neighbor, begging her to check on him at his after-school program. Screeching into Isabel's driveway, I found her sitting on the front steps, looking shell-shocked. Police cars surrounded the house, their lights painting the quiet street in surreal flashes of red and blue. Oh, Olivia, Isabel sobbed as I wrapped her in a hug. How could he do this, my own son? Before I could respond, my phone rang. It was my neighbor. Olivia, Elliot's not at the community center. They said a man claiming to be his uncle picked him up an hour ago. The world tilted beneath my feet. Sean had Elliot. All this, the break-in, the theft, it had been a distraction. A detective approached us, his face grim. Ma'am, we've got an APB out on your ex-husband, but I need to ask you some questions. I nodded numbly, my mind racing. How could I have been so blind? I thought cutting Sean out of our lives would solve everything, but I'd underestimated his desperation. And his cunning. As I recounted everything to the detective, a terrible realization dawned on me. Sean wasn't just running from debt now. He was running from the law, with my son as his hostage and bargaining chip. My phone buzzed again, another text, meet me at the old factory, come alone, or you'll never see the kid again. I stared at the message, my heart pounding. Every instinct screamed at me to tell the police, to let them handle this. But I knew Sean. He was unpredictable, dangerous, if he felt cornered. I looked at Isabel, still shaken on the steps, then at the detective waiting expectantly for more information. In that moment, I had to make an impossible choice. Trust the authorities to save my son, or take matters into my own hands and risk everything. The weight of the decision pressed down on me like a physical force. Whatever I chose, there would be no going back. Elliot's life hung in the balance, and the clock was ticking. My heart pounded as I approached the old factory its dilapidated structure looming against the darkening sky. Every instinct screamed at me to turn back to let the police handle this. But the thought of Elliot, scared and alone with Sean, propelled me forward. I'd managed to slip away from Isabel's house, leaving a vague note about following a lead. The guilt of lying to her and the police gnawed at me, but I couldn't risk Sean doing something desperate if he saw cops. As I neared the entrance, a figure emerged from the shadows, Rachel, Sean's girlfriend, her face pale and drawn. Olivia, she whispered, I'm so sorry, I never meant for any of this to happen. I brushed past her. Where's my son? She grabbed my arm. Wait, you need to know, Sean's not alone. The men he owes money to, they're here too, they're dangerous. Olivia. Cold fear gripped me, what do they want? Rachel's eyes filled with tears. They want Elliot to, to sell him, to cover Sean's debts. The world tilted beneath my feet, human trafficking, my worst nightmare come to life. Where are they? I demanded, my voice barely recognizable. Rachel pointed towards a back entrance. Third floor, but Olivia, you can't go alone. We should call the police. I was already moving, her pleas fading behind me. 
As I climbed the rusted stairs, I dialed 911, leaving the line open in my pocket. If nothing else, they'd trace the call. Voices drifted down the hallway as I reached the third floor. I crept closer, my heart in my throat. Just a kid, man. This wasn't the deal. Sean's voice, trembling, a deeper voice responded, The deal is whatever we say it is. You owe us, and the kid will fetch a good price. Mom. Elliot's cry pierced the air, followed by the sound of a slap. Something in me snapped. I burst through the door, adrenaline coursing through my veins. The scene before me was chaos. Sean, bloody and bruised, stood between two menacing men and Elliot, who was tied to a chair. Another man held a gun, swinging it between Sean and my son. Let him go, I snarled, surprising myself with the ferocity in my voice. The man with the gun turned, his eyes cold. Well, well, Mommy's here to save the day. Sean's eyes widened. Olivia, run, get out of here. But I stood my ground. I'm not leaving without my son, the gunman smirked. Noble. Stupid but noble. Here's the deal, lady. Your ex here owes us a lot of money. The kids are insurance. Take me instead, I said, my mind racing. I just needed to stall until the police arrived. I'm worth more. I can work. Pay off Sean's debt. One of the other men laughed. Oh, we could definitely find a use for you. Elliot whimpered, and I met his terrified eyes. It's okay, baby, I soothed. Mommy's here. Suddenly, Sean lunged at the gunman. The gun went off, the sound deafening in the enclosed space. I screamed, rushing towards Elliot. Everything happened in a blur. More gunshots rang out. I reached Elliot, shielding him with my body. Glass shattered as figures in tactical gear repelled through the windows. Police! Freeze! Relief washed over me as I untied Elliot, pulling him close. But as the chaos settled, I realized Sean wasn't moving, blood pooling beneath him. Daddy? Elliot's small voice broke through the commotion. I turned him away, my mind reeling. Sean, for all his faults, had tried to save us in the end. But at what cost? As paramedics swarmed in and police secured the scene, I clung to Elliot, the weight of everything that had happened crashing down on me. We were safe, but nothing would ever be the same. The detective from earlier approached his face grim. Ma'am, we need to talk about your ex-husband. And there's something you should know about his mother. My blood ran cold. What more could possibly go wrong? The sterile hospital corridor seemed to stretch endlessly before me as I made my way to Sean's room. Elliot's small hand clutched mine tightly, his eyes wide with a mix of fear and confusion. I'd debated bringing him, but in the end, I knew he needed this closure as much as I did. Outside Sean's room, Isabel sat in a wheelchair, her face a mask of grief and anger. The doctors had insisted she remain seated after her collapse upon hearing the news of Sean's involvement in Elliot's kidnapping. "'Are you sure about this?' Isabel asked, her voice barely above a whisper. I nodded, stealing myself. "'We need answers, all of us.' As we entered, Sean's eyes fluttered open. He looked small and broken in the hospital bed, tubes and wires snaking around him. For a moment I saw a flicker of the man I'd once loved, before addiction and desperation had twisted him into someone unrecognizable. "'Olivia,' he croaked. "'Elliot, Mom, I'm so sorry.' Isabel wheeled herself to his bedside, her eyes flashing. Sorry doesn't begin to cover it, Sean. You stole from me. You put your own son in danger. How could you? Sean's face crumpled. I never meant for any of this to happen. The gambling, the debts, it all spiraled out of control. I thought I could fix it, but— But you couldn't, I finished for him. And instead of asking for help, you dragged us all into your mess. Elliot, who had been silent until now, suddenly spoke up. Why did you take me, Dad? I was scared. Sean's eyes filled with tears. I'm so sorry, buddy. I I wasn't thinking straight. I thought if I had you with me, I could figure something out. But those men, they had other plans. I never would have let them hurt you, I swear. I felt a surge of anger. You shouldn't have put him in that position in the first place, Sean. Do you have any idea what you've done to this family? Sean looked away, unable to meet our eyes. I know I've ruined everything. I don't expect forgiveness, I just, I needed you all to know the truth, about everything. Over the next hour, Sean laid bare the full extent of his addiction, the depths of his debts, and the desperate measures he'd taken. With each revelation, I felt a mix of horror and pity. The man before us was a shell of the person we'd once known. As Sean's strength waned, Isabel spoke up, her voice firm despite the tears in her eyes. I can't do this anymore, Sean. I love you, but I can't watch you destroy yourself and hurt the people around you. 
When you get out of here, you're on your own. Sean nodded, a look of resignation on his face. I understand. I don't deserve your help, any of you. I took a deep breath, knowing what I had to say next. Sean, I'm filing for full custody of Elliot, and I'm getting a restraining order. Until you can prove you're clean and stable, you can't be a part of our lives. To my surprise, Sean didn't argue. It's for the best, he said softly. Elliot deserves better than what I can give him right now. As we prepared to leave, Elliot hesitated. Then in a move that brought tears to my eyes, he hugged his father. Get better, Dad, he whispered. In the weeks that followed, our lives slowly began to rebuild. Isabel, with proper medical care, showed improvement in her memory and overall health. She moved closer to us, becoming a constant, loving presence in Elliot's life. As for me, I found strength I never knew I had. The ordeal had tested me in ways I never imagined, but it had also shown me the depths of my resilience and love for my son. One evening, as Elliot, Isabel, and I sat around the dinner table, laughing and sharing stories, I felt a profound sense of peace wash over me. We had weathered the storm together, emerging stronger and more united than ever. Looking at my son's smiling face and Isabel's contented expression, I knew that despite the pain and hardship, we had found our way to a new beginning. The road ahead wouldn't always be easy, but with love, honesty, and the unbreakable bonds we'd forged, I was certain we could face whatever challenges lay ahead. As I tucked Elliot into bed that night, he looked up at me with those wise eyes of his. Mom, he said softly, are we going to be okay now? I smiled, my heart full. Yes, sweetheart, we're going to be more than okay. We're going to be wonderful. And for the first time in a long time, I truly believed it.